Hey everyone, it's the week of July 5th, 2010. My name is Rob Tart, and this is Spy's Perspective. A truck driver from Kitchener, Toronto is facing reckless driving charges. Now he was distracted, but not by the usual stuff, you know, talking on your cell phone, shaving, plucking your eyebrows, those kinds of things. This guy was distracted by attempts to perform dental surgery on himself. It turns out he had a loose tooth, and he wanted it out. Now most people would go see a dentist or at least pull over before deciding to extract their own tooth. This 58 year old driver decided his best course of action was to tie a piece of string around his tooth and then tie the other end to the roof of his cab. And then one good bump and the tooth should be gone. A police officer just happened to notice the man's rig as it was driving erratically. He then pulled the man over to question him about his driving. As it turned out the procedure worked. Apparently police saw a bloody tooth and a piece of string lying next to the guy. Alright marks for ingenuity and I'll keep a Darwin award ready to go for you. There are some things you just shouldn't do while driving. Now dentistry is one of them. Teeth extraction, root canals, filling cavities. Just leave it to the experts or at least pull over. I also don't recommend anything medical while driving. If your appendix is killing you, don't pull out a buck knife. Make an incision and start digging around until you find what you're looking for. Even basic grooming tasks should be avoided. Ingrown toenails or anything that requires access to your feet is best left as a non-driving activity. It also includes plucking ear hair, putting in contacts, shaving your head, getting rid of the rash that I have on my... Uh... Maybe the solution is to just have a do something stupid lane on every highway. People would just sign a waiver and then they're free to do anything they want while driving. So say you wanted to shave, read a book, and urinate in a bottle while driving, you could do that without fear of being arrested. Just make sure you avoid the head-on collusion with the person coming in the other direction who happens to be cutting their toenails and brushing their teeth. All right, let's see. Oh, that would be refreshing. I'd really like that. I would appreciate that. Uh, that would be good as well. Uh, I'd be very happy with that, and I'd be thankful for those. Uh, I think I'll go for the sub, but you feel free to choose whichever one you like. The town of Nottingham, New Hampshire has lifted a decade-old ban and is now giving the municipal employees the right to bear arms. It is Nottingham, so I guess it could be bow and arrow. Town's employee handbook previously stated that workers must have written permission to bring a gun to the workplace. Written permission? From who? My parents? Uh, let's see, please excuse Rob for being armed today, he's feeling a little threatened. Now I'm from Canada and guns are relatively rare around here. You're not even allowed to hold a gun in a hunting store unless you get a firearms license. Getting that license requires a two day course and then you have to wait another six to eight weeks for the license to arrive. Getting a permit to carry a concealed weapon in New Hampshire doesn't even require a gun safety course. I'm sorry, but that just doesn't sound like a good idea to me. What possible circumstances could exist at the office that would require you to pull out and use a firearm? Random cattle stampedes? The area is frequented by hobo ninjas? Rival companies are always conducting armed patrols in your area? In case someone challenges you to a draw at high noon in the cafeteria. I know what they say, guns don't kill people, people kill people. That's true, but those people usually have guns. I gotta wonder what their policy is on safety in the workplace. Be aware of the evacuation plan. Know your fire exits. File out of the building in an orderly fashion. Know the appropriate time to pull a concealed weapon to settle a dispute. Unless there's a really, really, really good reason to carry a concealed weapon at work, I think they should just continue to disallow that kind of thing. You wouldn't let people bring a machete to work, would you? How about a ball and chain or a broadsword? And what about Lenny, you know the crazy one? He's liable to show up to work with a tactical nuke. All I can say is when he comes storming out of the kitchen asking who stole his sandwich, you don't want to be anywhere near the blast radius if he decides to launch. Today's question of the day is, have you ever intentionally or unintentionally helped a loose tooth come out? Either by string or door or some other means. I remember I was at a buddy's house and I had a loose tooth and I decided to rock it and then twist it to take it out. It, it still makes me cringe to this day. I just want to say hi to my audience. I have over 2,000 subscribers now. I'm slowly but surely building up a subscriber base. I do my best to answer emails and post comments whenever I can. I am a pretty busy guy. I have a full-time job and a wife and a kid, so I, I do the best I can. If you like what you're seeing, please spread the word. Um, if you want to help me out, go over to Stir Fry TV. They're in my box, and just tell them that you want to see one of my videos featured. And just want to say thanks. Anyway, that's all I have for this week. Thanks for watching. My name is Rob Tart, and remember, it's not necessarily right or wrong. It's just my perspective. This guy was distracted by his attempts to a This guy was This guy was distracted by attempts to perform This guy was distracted by attempts This guy was a But there are some things that, there are some things you should Now dentistry is one of them getting a permit to carry a casino the area is frequent the area is frequented the area is frequented frequented the area is frequented frequented the area is frequented in case someone challenges you 
in case someone challenges you to, in case 